What's up, y'all? We are at Red's Twilight on the Erie. RV Resort. In Macedon. New York. And we are gonna check this park out. Let's go. If an antique collector and a master gardener had a baby, this RV resort would be the result. Except it's an RV resort, it's not a baby. <laughs> <laughs> so when you come into this park, you come down this little stretch of road and there's a cute little collection of stuff here on the side, like this Twilight or Bust Wagon. The only kind of bummer is the sun has not been too kind to these uh, Ninja Turtles and Duck Stuffins. But that's why I say this is like a antique collector meets a master gardener. Now this park is definitely a great spot for people with kids and families. There's a lot going on here for the kids to enjoy and have fun. I will say though, the three mile an hour speed limit has been annoying at times. There's times I feel like I just wish the people would uh, speed up and go by. It's kind of like everybody driving by is like a creeper, slowly driving by and watching you. It's just kind of awkward. Maybe we could go with seven mile an hour speed limit. <laughs> this park is definitely kids and pet friendly. So when you first come into the park, you're gonna see this sign right here with a little green, uh, you know, it's almost like a Ninja Turtle. And you've got the building right there, which is the main office. But this is basically a fork in the road. You could go left or you could go right. But thankfully they have the nice big red arrow that says, go right. They've got space over here to turn around. You'll come over this way, you'll stop, you'll go inside the office and you'll get a map and figure out where you're gonna go. Oh, a bunny rabbit. <laughs> and they'll help you uh, take the right way in. There's two gates, two, one, two on each way, and they'll help you take the right path so that you can get angled into your site appropriately. Some amazing flowers around this property. Don't you just love it when your microphone system dies on you and you realize you recorded a bunch of stuff without any audio? Yeah, here we are. So this playground back here, that is uh, something that came from an old McDonald's that was being torn down and they contacted Red, the owner of this RV resort, and said, would you like it? He went over there and took a bunch of photos of it, took it apart along with his son, and then brought it over here. And they've, I guess, struggled a little bit to get it put back together without the proper instructions as they don't know where all the exact pieces go, even based on their pictures. But once they get that all put back together, that's gonna to be a cool playground that the kids can play with when they come here. And that's not the only playground. There's a lot of other playground stuff going on over here. And here right by the canal, we've got a couple of picnic tables, which these look like McDonald's picnic tables from the 70s and 80s. Just a cool collection of stuff here. Got some horseshoes all right by the pool. And then you see the red boat back there, that is just for decoration, the SS Twilight. Uh, we went around thinking we could climb on it, but it's uh, the inside of it's kind of rotted out. And then we've got the arcade back there, which has got some great classic pinball machines, the original Miss Pac-Man arcade cabinet. And I say original because it's not one of the new modernized ones. It is one of the originals that's still in good working shape. Plus there's a library in there and uh, some puzzles and games. And Tanya found a book about where to camp next from the creators of the RV Atlas. So she's checking that book out. Now I never did get clarification on what this building is. This is an active project they've been working on. I've heard people in there playing music and using their tools, power tools, as they prepare this building for whatever it's gonna be. It might be a future amenity. It's right here behind the swimming pool. So, I don't know, I was hoping for a gym. It'd be great, right? Let's go check out this playground next. When I say this playground, I mean, it's, it's a lot. There is a lot going on in this playground. I just heard a fish jump in, in the Erie Canal. Now over here on the other side of this building, that's a project, you've got a number of different playgrounds. Looks like the kind of stuff you can build yourself, some things from old parks. You've got this massive train over here. The kids have loved to go climb around inside that train. A boat you can climb on, swings, digging, picnic tables, and then they've even got this playground, which looks like it came out of a school, but it's, I mean, it is firmly planted in the ground. This is not something they just threw over here. It's a little older. It could use a little love, but this is just a cool, another example of how this place is, looks like something that an antique collector put together. There's some cool stuff going on in this playground. Now we come to what's pretty much Tanya's favorite part about this park. 
We've got this gazebo right here. You can go sit in. It looks like somebody's building a puzzle in there on the table. But then there's a number of these covered benches over here where you can just sit and look at the water and watch the trains go by. So why do you like uh, hanging out here by the Erie Canal? I just like sitting here because I get a good view of the train as it goes by. Yeah, it's just something that you enjoy, just seeing that train roll by and the water. I think it's nice. The mosquitoes make it not nice. <laughs> That's but, true. Yeah. It's peaceful till you got a bunch of geese that start running around. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the water's just right there, and the trains are just on the other side. There's also a bike trail yeah. just on the other side. You can see people riding their bikes down the we, down the canal. We found out that there's two two tracks. There's an Amtrak train that'll go by in front of the cargo train or whatever you call it. Fishing is definitely something that you can do here. They've got this nice little dock here. Plus you can sit down the way on the rocks over there. There's been some families that have come out here and caught some decent sized fish. And they do sell live bait inside the office. So that is one of the other pastimes that you can do while you're here. And I think we might have another train coming. I'd say it was probably the third or fourth train we've had since we started recording this video today. I'm not having a good microphone day. I just now figured out that after I changed microphones, I plugged it into the wrong port. I hope that we could hear everything before this point, otherwise I'll be doing a lot of voiceover work today. I was hoping we would see more boats, but this isn't really a commercial route for the boats anymore. No. This train is great because the kids can climb all around inside of it, a couple of slides, and then the playground's even got a boat that the kids can climb on. There's a lot going on in this playground. It's a lot of fun. One of the cool attributes about this park is this collection of bicycles back here. These are bikes that were left behind by people that had camped here. And rather than just trash them, the owners of the RV park actually set all the bikes up and got some helmets. And now when kids come and camp here, they can borrow a bike and a helmet for free. They've also got kayaks for rent. I think they're $20 for two hours. And there's also the painting for gold where you can buy the bag of dirt and go over there and play around with it in the water and get some gemstones out of it. They can also, uh, you can have packages delivered here and pick them up right out front of the office for no extra charge. They fill up propane as well, right over here by the dumpsters. There is uh, a lot going on right here. How about this collection of carousel horses? Like I keep saying, this place is like a antique collector and a master gardener had an RV park. That person's stuck in a wall. They'll do crafts and games out here. I think they'll have poker on some nights. They've got a fire pit. And here's your public service announcement. They have had DJs with dances right here. So if you're looking for a park where it's quiet all the time, this is probably not it. It's not too old. I mean, the jukebox has got uh, CDs in it, but the old wheelchair. I think that's a barber's chair, maybe? So is that one. This is a barber's chair that was filled with straw. There's another train coming. All right, let's check out the dog park. Okay. Wait, why are there goats at the dog park? What? <laughs> what are you doing in the dog park? Those aren't dogs. Are you, are you, are you a dog? Yes, in all actuality, we knew this wasn't a dog park. However, Kaylin and Kira discovered it pretty much how we just uh, replayed this for you. They, while I set up the RV, Kaylin and Kira are supposed to take Daisy and go take her for a walk on, it's the kind of the end of the travel day. And so they came over here to the dog park and we're like, there's, uh, there's goats in the dog park. There is no other dog park at this uh, RV park. So that's, that's it. I don't know that I didn't ask the history. Was this ever a dog park? Or was this always a goat area? So now you're gonna stop? What are you eating? 
Must be good, huh? So apparently at one point in time they had some train rides for kids 10 and under. But I think they've been having some equipment failure. And they've even had what looked like a hay-hay ride, but haven't seen that going either. So the master gardeners have been uh, hard at work gardening as well. You see our RV over there? And they've been actually handing stuff out. Kira came home the other day with some cucumbers and a bell pepper. And a squash too? Did, did she come up with a squash? You can see our campsite there where Tanya's walking to. Pretty good sized campsite. Easily fits our rig and our truck. The one right behind us I think is a little smaller. That one's been more people that haven't stayed quite as long. But then there's been a lot of, uh, there's a lot of seasonal sites here too. These people actually had a, a big toy hauler and I think they like went on vacation somewhere and took the toy hauler. But then this is still like their home base they come back to. Can y'all see the reds written in rocks there? And there's a retention pond right up above or behind that, which the girls immediately tried to go fishing in only to discover there's no fishing allowed in there. There's another train. Yeah. <laughs> so many trains. So many. If train noise bothers you, this might be a problem for you at this park. It's not that bad. It doesn't bother us, but then we yeah. sleep with the AC on and the fan blowing, and so we have a lot of distraction. Yeah. That's not a big deal for us. So we are at this park and in this area because of our nieces, mm -hmm. Asia and Anaya, which have been in a few videos now. Mm -hmm. They've been coming over to stay with us, like come stay with us for two nights and then go back home for two nights and just been meeting up with their mom and picking them up and bringing them back over here so that they can spend time with their cousins. Mm -hmm. It's been a great time coming cook them some spaghetti or some fettuccine yes. or some pizza or they love my fettuccine <laughs> And I think they like my spaghetti. Yes, we love your spaghetti not just them <laughs> So that's why we're here and why we we picked this park uh, It was a little bit costly for us. I'm not real thrilled with the cost of the park, but the location is what really got us it was a good spot for us to be not in the city but close enough, mm -hmm. but it was about a thousand dollars for the month. And what really nipped me in the butt though was when I got an electric bill. It's probably gonna be four to five hundred dollars for electric for the month. Mm -hmm. And I thought maybe the RV park was profiting on that, but I looked into it and New York State has some of the highest uh, per kilowatt hour prices out of most states in the United States. So they're pretty much just, you know, saying, sorry, but you got to pay for it because you used it. That was a bit of a bummer. So if I seem a little bit hard or skeptical on this park, it's because I feel like the price overall seems a little high. Mm -hmm. I feel like there was those are Camp Margaritaville prices, yeah. and we're not quite getting Camp Margaritaville level amenities. But we're here because the kids. Yeah, we're here for family, and I feel like it's it's worth it. And it's it's a beautiful park. The staff have been very nice. Yes. Very I mean, nice. It's the the husband and wife that own it, and their son is also here. Well, he'll be out mowing the lawn, and then there's a few other work campers that I've encountered as well. Everyone's been super nice. Very helpful. Now, one of the other things that bothered me, so I'll just kind of hit the negative stuff here, and then we'll get out of the negative. The bathhouse. If you've been watching our videos for a while, the bathhouse and the showers is kind of a big deal to me. To us. To us. Well, not as much to you because. I don't do it all the time, but that's basically how I, I, we made a whole video about it. That's how we got started was talking about bathrooms and how nice they were or not nice. That's kind of our thing. Yep. And at this park, the bathrooms, they are they look wonderful. Uh, I like the, the uh, I think it's called subway tile. It's a fairly recent redo on the showers. They look cool, mm -hmm. but there's a timer. You only get eight minute showers and then five minutes off. And when you first start, it takes at least two minutes to get any hot water. So now you're down to only a six minute shower. That's been pretty frustrating for me. And that kind of, at the beginning, that kind of set me off. I'm glad we didn't make this uh, video earlier because I was really upset about the shower timers. Mm -hmm. There also is no trash can in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So you have to like carry your own trash back with you, which is, I mean, it's doable. It's just kind of odd. I think this is the first place I've ever been to where there's no trash can in the bathroom. Yes, but New York, I'm finding, has a trash can problem yes, everywhere. Yes. Sometimes there will be a trash can and sometimes there won't. Most of the time there won't be. Yeah. Yeah, we're actually to the point now when we're walking around somewhere in New York, we're like, oh, a trash can. 
<laughs> I don't know what the deal is here. Yes. It's kind of bizarre. Yeah, walking through Walmart and I'm like, there's no trash can in anywhere. So yeah, it's crazy. I guess the only other thing I would harp on is since we've got these gravel spots, they're a little bit hard to back into. I think that they should add some extra gravel at the corners to allow for more uh, turning the tires. I feel bad since they work very hard on their landscaping. Mm -hmm. I think they should add some more gravel in the corners to allow the backing into the trailers a little bit easier without destroying the grass and the landscaping. Mm -hmm. So like I said, I'm nitpicking on some of these details just because at the cost, I kind of expect like a bigger pool, a water slide, a hot tub, a bath house with lockable doors and unlimited hot water. Mm -hmm. So just those fine little things. If, if it was cheaper, I probably would, well, like when we go to Meeker, Colorado, mm -hmm. we stay at a park, it's $400. There's no bath house. There's no amenities whatsoever. Yeah. But we don't say anything because it's $400. Yes. It's like, you know, the price is right to shut our mouths. <laughs> <laughs> We'll go ahead and close this video out about this park, Red's Twilight on the Erie, mm -hmm. right here in the flowers. I mean, look at this. Can you can you see around me? <laughs> the, the flowers here are really beautiful. Yeah, they are. Uh, I think that they do an excellent job in this park. Just, just imagine if your dream was to have a beautiful giant garden. Yes. And now Red has a big beautiful giant garden, and then he just he lets people come and stay in his garden. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, you want to pay me some money and come sleep in my garden? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's essentially what's going on here. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you like it. You like yeah. this park. Yes, yeah. I love this park. This is a, a great park. It's very quiet, very... I feel safe here. I feel like there's we haven't had unruly neighbors or any issues whatsoever. There's a lot of families here. Yeah. The pool is always busy. I feel like this is a, a yep. great place. The older community. You have mm -hmm. older people that stay here, mm -hmm. and sometimes we've encountered the, the 55 plus crowd where they can't stand the kids. Yes. That's not the case here. No. Everyone has loved our kids. And the dog. It, the people, yes. It's like everybody has a dog here. Yep. <laughs> so it's great. It's a very welcoming community that yes. make you feel like you belong here. Yeah. And the area around as well, there's plenty of shopping. There's a Walmart three miles away. Mm -hmm. We've gone to Wegmans, we've gone to Tops. Those are both great grocery stores nearby. Mm -hmm. uh, plenty of restaurants to choose from. I mean, we've been going to the mall multiple times. If you yeah. haven't seen like our visit to the Cat Cafe in the mall, that's about yes. 11 miles away. Mm -hmm. Multiple Chipotle's in the area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that's going on here, as well as all of the waterfalls. Oh, yeah. We've seen some of the most epic waterfalls we probably will ever see. Yes, in New York. Yes, that is, I, that's, I'm saying New York's best attribute yeah. is the waterfalls. Yeah. And by staying here, it was like a 60 mile drive to a couple state parks, a 100 mile drive to Niagara Falls, but it was so worth it. It was. It wasn't just a little creek of dribbling water, it was <laughs> a major. I mean, I still can't figure out why is Niagara Falls not in like the uh, Seven Wonders of the World. Yeah. It's a big deal, Holyfield. <laughs> yes. All right. So if you're in this area and you're interested in staying at a park that they have nightly, weekend, weekly, and monthly spots, or even seasonal, mm -hmm. this is an option. This is east of Rochester, and it's not too far from Lake Ontario or the Finger Lakes. So you can check out Red's mm -hmm. Twilight on the Erie. Mm -hmm. Definitely check it out. All right. Well, we thank you all so much for watching. Remember that life happens. Don't let it stop you. Stay, Stay fresh, fresh, cheese bags. bags.